Chambers, one of the top tacklers. He could have been a defensive end. He could have been a linebacker. He could have been an outside backer. He, 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 he could have been a safety. Cannot escape. It's Chambers. Relentless, honestly, relentless. I wanted to have like over 100 tackles or whatever, which I ended up having like 167. Rush, blitz, sack. Jeremiah Chambers drops. Chase for K. You know, we tell our players all the time everybody's got a story. Juice has a story. If I were to get drafted or something, I would see my mom and dad cry because I know they will. It makes me want to cry now just thinking about it. So, you know, I just always had goals to be an All-American. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to beat the best. I would put my body through hell, you know, just to you know, play. Like I had honestly probably my shoulder was probably falling completely apart. And I played the last six games, but I just put a needle in it. I think the biggest accomplishment for me was overcoming what I've been through to get to the point to where I am now. And most people will think that I would say, you know, being an All-American or being at a D1 university. For me and the people that actually know me, I think that they would also say that getting over what I went through and overcoming all of that stuff and adversity to become the man I am now and the type of player I am now as well. I don't think anybody commands or gets more respect than Jeremiah, to be honest with you. Yeah, he's one of those guys that as soon as they walk in the room, everyone kind of perks up a little bit. Obviously, he's got a great opportunity ahead of him. Um, my take from all the scouts that look at him, um, they love his ability to be versatile, um, especially on the special team side in the NFL. Um, I think that's where he's really got to make a lot of his headway, at least at the beginning. Pacers. Hey, Show them your hops. You want to show me your hots? He's got, there's a lot of different uh, sides to Jeremiah off the field. I mean, there's the guy who watches The Bachelor on Monday nights and cries when we watch a sad movie. And then the guy who is just like he is on the field. Yes. Awesome, Jack and Colleen painted those the other day. My mom has a dog wall. She's herself, tough. So the kitchen where I Eat everything. Yeah. Is that unsweet tea? Yep. Well, You're a psycho. No, Austin looks kind of like Ted Bundy. No, he doesn't. I grew up uh, mainly in Austin. I first started, uh, my first sport was baseball, and I was four. I went started playing tackle at six. I was pretty good, I was pretty athletic, and so they saw talent in me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's like, that's him with. Megan. When was that? Freshman year of high school. Oh my. God. He has all the abilities in the world um, to be at that level. A lot of things for him is just trusting people as soon as he walks in the door. He's definitely had some struggles in the past, um, and that's what makes his maturity even better. So Jimmy is my dad now, uh, Ray is my mom as well. They knew my biological mom before. Whenever I was five, when playing flag football, all of the dads like coached us. And so they were all like father figures to me. I remember Jimmy talking to my biological mom and he was like begging her to, you know, get me to come play tackle. Um, whenever I moved to Dallas, I was in eighth grade. Like I started seeing a change in my biological mom and she started going like kind of crazy. I watched my boss and mom do drugs. They smoked a lot of like weed and stuff and did drugs in the house and stuff so we could smell it, but we were like so young and oblivious to everything, we just didn't know. She started saying that she was God and like, oh, I'd be having a normal conversation just like I am with y'all and then all of a sudden she would snap and she'd be like, you know, all fine and then she'd be like, I'm God. And I was like, I was terrified. I actually have no idea where she was working. All I knew is that something's changed in her and she would be gone all night. My biological mom, actually, <clears throat> after one game, I had no idea she was here and she showed up randomly. 
and she was, you know, acting a little funny and stuff. So I knew something was going on with her. And so I walked off the field and I said hi to my family. And I looked over on the corner and she had like, like uh, his face, it was like, like terrifying. Like her face was completely red and she was like, you know, like pissed, like extremely mad. So I walked over to her and I was like, what are you doing here? Like, you know, cause I, I didn't expect her to be here. And um, she just like lost her mind, like, like lost it in front of everybody. And I was like, you need to get off this field. Like, I don't want to see you ever again. And just, it's really embarrassing for me. But like at the same time, it was just like, I, I hadn't, like, I, I kind of like blacked out cause I was so mad and upset. I was driving on this road actually right here. There was a lady walking on the side of the road by the light and it was her. And she had some random clothes on, I don't know, but she turned and she looked at me and cause I stopped right next to her and I was like, what? You know, like I was just shocked. I had no idea. And I saw her, she was just standing on the side of the road here in Abilene and I was just like, what are you, what in the world? So I just drove off and I haven't seen anything, seen her since. Favorite yeah. advice too. You were arms and ears. <laughs> Why he was so serious in that picture. Jimmy told him whenever he was little to don't ever smile in football pictures. I've actually got um, all of his baby pictures. Or, I mean, I say all of them. The ones that were um, given to us. <laughs> Look at that. My biological dad worked at Dell for a while, and then I have no idea what he does now. It's, he would scare the crap out of us as kids, honestly. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that one that took care of my little sister. Like when we moved out of that house, we lived in a hotel for a year. And I, but I, I knew I had to be strong to take care of my sister. And so I would do that. I'd walk to Jack in the Box at like 11 at night to get her food because she'd been starving ever since school. Walk her to school, take her back, and everything. I'd be late to school because I had to walk her there. My freshman year, I wanted to quit playing football because I was doing so much to f help my sister. I really just, was, I think I honestly would have dropped out of school, like out of high school. Um, got a job, took care of my sister if I would have just stayed. Whenever that was happening, that got, it got to the worst times like that. Um, I, that's when I, I, call, I called Ray and Jimmy, and I was like, I need help. I knew Jimmy would, like, loved me like his own son. It was literally like a split decision. Like he was, you know, absolutely. They had bigger chunks of vegetables. And turned my husband was like, what do you do this? <laughs> I was like, why? What's wrong? He's like, it's kind of steps in. Vegetables. I'm most grateful for Ray and Jimmy. Like I said, I'd probably be in jail. I have no idea where I'd be. I wouldn't have been playing any sports. When I went to school, I guarantee I would have dropped out. They changed my life and molded me into the person I am now. At this point, I was 13, you know, 14, so I was still, like, I'd lose it sometimes. I remember times when I would be in my room and Ray would literally hear me crying. She'd run in there and just hold me in my room. I grew up fast, like, really fast. I felt like I was growing up by the age of 14, so, you know, going through everything I did, I think it just affected me so much to where, I, like, nothing impacts me anymore. Him and Tracy was crazy. This is one of the only guys we had to go to the NFL, right? Todd or Pat Moon. He's probably the only Vista Ridge. The only one so far. Right. right. And we've got you and Daquan right, both right now. Right. Trying. I've been trying to talk to Daquan about getting him to train. I think, you know, going through high school and, you know, I did a lot of, I did like counseling and stuff throughout high school. My biological mom, I just, if she would show up randomly, like, and I could see her, like how she looked after what she's been doing, like it, that killed me a lot. Uh, just a tremendous young man that came over, had to overcome a lot of adversity, um, especially at an early age. Um, and, and we were just so thankful. Um, there were times we weren't sure that he would, he would get to continue with our program. Yeah, yeah this is like the, the next level wall. Um, Juice is going to be a highly successful individual. Um, you don't overcome the things he's overcome and do the things he's doing and not learn how to be successful in a lot of things. One state semis or quarterfinals. Whenever I got here, like, it was like, okay, you know, I'm about to relax. I'm like, it's just me, my family that I have now, and the people that I'm about to meet here in college. Our defensive coordinator always said, have fun. You know, enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy the time with each other and stuff. And my dad always told me, he was like, there's nothing like high school football. You know, that bond you have with the guys who grew up and played, and he's, he's right. They'll all be my wedding.
the other day I was on the phone with my parents and I was just like, I have no idea what I want to do. Like, I mean, if I don't play football, like, who am I? And they just kept reminding me, it was like, you're more than a football player. And that's what they've always told me. There's a guy that um, took pictures for like our high school team and they've always followed me since high school and they came and took pictures actually at one of my games. They made that for me, it was pretty awesome. Me and my dad, if we're at the ranch or something, we'll have those special talks and moments. The mindset of work hard, be able to provide, stuff all comes from him. He put a fire in me and like that made me want to be the best. And like I didn't care if you were 6'9", 300 pounds, I will run my face through your chest. Five years, hopefully still playing or thinking about being done playing football. Um, but I want to have like a family, just work to be the man that I didn't have as a young kid. And I want my family to have the best and, you know, be the best whatever they do because I know how it feels to have nothing and be nothing, basically. If I'm blessed to be able to get that opportunity, then, you know, it will be hard. Um, and that's just based because of the stuff I've been through before. It's so me and trusting people is just not a thing. But for the NFL, I feel like I know what I have to do and who I need to be and what I, you know, what I need to say. I would like to see him in the league, personally, just because I know that work that he's put in, I know how much he cares about it. If anyone deserves a chance to play, it's him. I mean, he's proved it time and time again that he can play at a high level. If the league doesn't pan out, I know he'll have a successful future just because of his drive and attitude. But I don't worry about him. If that doesn't work out, he'll, he'll make something happen for sure. I always call him our guy. He was our guy last year. Like everyone kind of flocked towards him, just really followed him. So he's one of those natural born leaders. They listen to what he has to say. Uh, you know, the, the thing about him, if, if, you, if you met him, you wouldn't know that he's such a fierce competitor off the field. People, people are drawn to him. Um, he's respectful. He's a, he's a great young man.